Hey everybody, welcome to the Atheist Experience. We are live. Today is Sunday, October 23rd, 2010. I'm Matt Delahoney. Join me is Martin Wagner. How to do? We've got a shortened show. I'm going to try and get through the announcements relatively quickly. As a reminder to everybody, the telephone number has changed now that we're in the bigger studio, and that's not me. Yeah. See? Uh, it's 512-472-2255 is the new telephone number. There's already people queued up because we start streaming a little beforehand. Uh, we are sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. And for more information about the ACA and the ACA's activities, uh, you can visit our website, www.atheist-community.org. And I already did these out of order, so mm, Shelley's back there screaming, what's he doing? Uh, don't worry so you can visit the website. In addition to this show, the ACA also sponsors a bi-weekly internet audio podcast, which is back. Back! And better than ever. I busted my butt yesterday, and Russell and Dennis and I sat down and did a brand new nonprofits uh, episode, which we stream live, and mm -hmm. then afterwards, actually, I posted the gorilla episode that right, you the and one Gia I did Chris with did. Hello Gia, Hello Chris. Hi, and thank you guys. It was awesome. Mm, um, I posted that, and I posted the one we did yesterday, mm -hmm. and I posted the interviews that the I interview. did at the Texas yeah. Free Thought Convention, yeah. so you can hear from some of the speakers that are up there. So nonprofits is back. You can stop bitching. Mm -hmm. uh, everything's good now. Yeah, you get like three shows in one go. So, yeah, I mean. You know. yeah. How could you ask for anything it's like more? Christmas in October for atheists? So, in addition to, the, to finding out about the ACA's events like the Happy Hour and the Lecture Series website. and all these other things at the website, currently at the website you'll find the 2010 ACA's Voters Guide, um, which we send out to every candidate running in every election that Texans will vote on in the upcoming elections. The early voting has actually already started. Um, this is a nonpartisan list of you know, 24 issues that they were, uh, that the candidates were asked to rate their degree of uh, agreeal or disagreeal, uh, which Agreement. just sounds wrong. Agreement. Agreement. Or disagreement. That's why it sounds wrong. Agreeal. Agreeal. That's you, why it sounds wrong. That agreeal. I'm an idiot. You. So anyway, it's posted up there for everybody. Well, we are to look all at. in agreeal. Yes. And and by the way, we're hoping that this voter, <laughs> we're hoping that the voters wonderful. guide is useful for everybody because. Uh, there are issues on there, you know, covering everything, lots of church-state separation things. Mm. Uh, and, and if you are looking for a specific answer, whether you're looking for somebody who is a strong supporter of church-state separation, or if you're looking for somebody who wants to abolish church-state separation and destroy, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. founding principles of our government, yeah. you'll find those answers there, too. Indeed. Uh, so please check that out. And the last announcement, dinner after the show or the last of the regular announcements. Mm -hmm. After the show's over, we get together and go to dinner at Threadgill's at 301 West Riverside Drive. We're on the air till 530, which means we'll be down there around 6 or so. Any atheist or atheist-friendly person is welcome to come to that or any of our other events. You do not have to be a member to attend. Um, and the last kind of announcement thingy is specific to me. For people who've been asking about when am I actually going to go get more, you know, a formal debate with somebody, mm. well, it's actually happening. November 16th, UMBC, that's University of Maryland, Baltimore County, uh, the, lectures, or the, the debate is on the source of human morality. It's an interfaith debate uh, sponsored by a couple groups on campus, and it'll be at the UMBC University Center uh, ballroom So at 7 o'clock on November 16th. Mm -hmm. As you get more details about that, you could probably put it on the blog and the website and all the rest of it. I mean, I get any more details other than date and time. Oh, and then it's then it's topic. Oh, okay. But, well, who are you debating against? Do you know your opponent? Yes, he's an uh, an Orthodox priest, and I've forgotten the name. So yeah, I'll have uh, more information at some point in the future. But. Okay. All right. Well, there it is. How are you? I am well. Really? Yourself? Yes, I am. Did you bring a subject to talk about for 20 or 30 minutes of the show? Uh, uh, surprisingly, no, because they've cut our time. So I just uh, let's just just duke it out with callers. We're I going thinking. to calls. How about that? Good what do you deal. think? Yeah. Is it Venaris? Yes, this is C. How are you? 
Hey, how's it going? Just fine. Oh, um, first I got to say I love you guys. Show I'm a recent recent atheist myself. You know, former Christian, former Muslim, both as a matter of fact. Um, I wish you guys could. Um, I could see your show live in Mississippi, but you know, there's some hardcore Christians down here. They probably go to the studio with pitches and uh, you know torches and pitchforks to <laughs> the well. studio and try to stop it. So I wouldn't. We'll, we'll just right. plant Frank in their path, and they'll, it just, yeah. I, and, and thanks for mentioning the studio. I have to put this reminder out real quick, and that is that now that we moved to the big studio, not only have things changed, including the telephone number, but there's room for actually people to come down to the studio and watch the show live. So yeah. if you're in the Austin area and want to do that, you can go to channelaustin.org for Lots information. Of go ahead with your question, Benar. Sorry. Okay. Um, in your past shows, I know you all mentioned briefly about the, uh, the Christian story of Jesus and how it possibly could have been influenced by earlier religions. I know you mentioned the Zeitgeist movie or whatever. I and, mentioned um, Zeitgeist as an abomination that's a big steaming pile of crap, but yeah. Okay, well, do you guys agree that, you know, that um, a lot of earlier religions have stories of the sons of God helping mankind, and, you know, they're being born by pure or virgin women and miracle workers, you know, the uh, prophets being miracle workers or what have you. Right. Um, you guys kind of agree with that as well, possibly? Well, we sure we we have examples of lots of other myths that share common elements. Okay, now um, I, I get into it with a lot of Christians down here because I'm an atheist myself, and then I tell them, well, this is one of the smaller reasons why I just don't buy into the whole Jesus being the Son of God thing. And then they say, well, you don't have to worry about that because this is actually the work of the devil, because the devil had some foresight and he saw the events that was going to happen of Jesus' life, and he encouraged people that came before Jesus to write down these stories. And what has happened is um, uh, he said he had some kind of master plan to where, you know, after Jesus died, he was going to come back and say, yeah, you guys, I know you didn't see Jesus, but don't worry, it's a mythology because, look, it's, you know, kind of from earlier mythologies and things of that nature. So yeah. um, well, my question would be, and I know you guys, um, I was listening to an interview, you're talking with an individual about the devil, and, of course, mm -hmm. like me, you know, you see him as a... Here's what I ask Christians who, who hit me with that one or something similar to that. I say, is the devil more powerful than God? Okay. Inevitably, they say no. In which case, I respond, well, then how can anything the devil wants to do possibly inconvenience or upset any of God's plans? How can the devil's master plan in any way supersede or uh, thwart God's plan? Hmm. I mean, God is all-powerful. Christians insist that the devil is somehow less, is, is not all-powerful in the way God is, but yet somehow the devil is still able to inconvenience and uh, disconcert God's plans and thwart right. God's plans and, and essentially be a nuisance and a menace to God, even though he's not as powerful. You know, this is one of those situations where omnipotence, suddenly the definition changes when it becomes, the real definition of it becomes inconvenient. Omnipotence trumps non-omnipotence at all times. Hmm. So if, if the devil isn't as powerful as God, then nothing the devil could do could possibly bother God, could possibly impact what God wants. And so, so to say, oh, well, the devil has a plan and he screws up things for God. Right. Well, then you've, either God is not all-powerful, in which case, why, why, why are you bothering to worship him? Or you've just uh, revealed a massive uh, logical... <laughs> Uh, fuster cluck in your belief system. Although, in, in the interest of, of preparing you as best possible, uh, it's, it's very likely that, depending on who you're talking to, um, they're not going to find Martin's response daunting at all, because the, the particular example they're talking about is Satan's going around doing things, and it's not messing with God's plan, it's messing with individuals' ability to perceive the truth. And, and I would say that you can still use the same thing, that obviously there's some problem with this God, you know, and his ability to communicate the truth to people. Um, and then the, the, they'll come back and say, well, no, 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 that's you, you're willful, whatever. They've, I've, I've seen this used for a number of things. Actually, it was in the movie, The God Who Wasn't There, um, I think it's Brian Fleming's movie, talked about, you know, the devil planting other mythologies that would turn out to be similar to the Jesus story in order to confuse people. And now you've also got people running around saying that the devil's been running around since the beginning of time burying dinosaur bones so that we'd find <laughs> them in order to confuse people and lead them to evolution. Um, I, I'd like to know where their evidence for that is and why this isn't just some kind of ad hoc 
you know, explanation, which, by the way, if, if you don't want to use ad hoc, you can just tell them that they're pulling it out of their butt because that's exactly what they're doing. They're, saying, they're looking at this, and you've pointed out a legitimate, a potentially legitimate problem with what they're saying, and they are inventing out of whole cloth mm -hmm. a response. You can, you can do that ad nauseum. Um, if, if you weren't buying the, you know, the devil did this, you know, to confuse you thing, there's another ad hoc explanation that they can come up with afterwards. And eventually it will, tr it will trickle down to you, you're just, you, you have yeah, they're just heart, making stuff you up, just don't yeah. want to believe it, you want to be sinful, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's w one of the reasons why if you're going to have conversations like this, you you're need to get people yeah. to define their terms ahead of time, explain what they believe and why and what sort of evidence they're likely to accept. Because if you begin and they're not going to accept, you know, logical arguments and they're not going to accept, you know, scientifically verifiable facts, you are wasting your time. Um, if, they're, if they're that entrenched, uh, there's unlikely to be anything you could ever say that could convince them. And, it should, and you should also take the effort to point out that you're not going to accept, uh, you know, pull it out of your butt explanations, you want actual evidence. If, in fact, the devil was going around creating these mythologies in order to confuse people later, what is their evidence to support that claim? Mm -hmm. right. And, yeah. right. And usually their kind of argument is something to the effect of, you know, in the book of Job, they say, well, God sometimes allows the devil to do crazy stuff like that because it's a, I don't know, some kind of test or something like that, you know. Yeah. Usually and that's their kind of argument. Why, why, would, why would any God do that? Yeah. I mean, what kind of game is this guy playing? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Hey, I'll let you completely destroy this guy's life just to see what he does. Shouldn't he already know what he's going to do? I mean, that's where you can get back into the Precisely. omniscience and yeah. omniscience of, yeah. of their God thing. I mean, you know, this whole thing of, oh, well, the devil gets to mess with people's minds and confuse them. He gets to bury dinosaur bones. He gets to do this. He gets to do that. If God's omniscient, then he knows in advance every instance of the devil uh, doing this. He knows the names of every individual whose minds the devil is going to be out there confusing. Uh, so he is allowing this to happen, just as he knew in advance Eve was going to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, and yet he, he went ahead and allowed it to happen. So either evil was part of God's plan all along. Which it was. Which it was. In which case you have to wonder, well, why does, does I mean, he creates this universe and then immediately just overcomplicates everything. Whatever was the point. You'll actually, so, get, you'll actually find Christians who, who will flatly admit that, in fact, not only does God do things like what mm -hmm. he purportedly does with Job, but that he's given the devil kind of uh, reign launch, yeah. over the earth, and that's because that's the only proper way to <coughs> test us. And, and I would say that not only does this, not, does this make their God particularly uh, immoral uh, mm -hmm. and a bit of a dick, by establishing this system that it couldn't possibly be, be fair. Yeah. We are, yeah. he's allowing us to be pitted against some sort of supernatural being who has, while not all powerful, has lots and lots of power. How can you possibly um, hold people responsible for failing to successfully do battle with a being that can <coughs> supposedly um, trick your senses? Sure. The, very, the very criteria that we use to establish what's real and what's not real. Yeah. Well, right. it, it's kind of like that, um, you know, uh, God is the devil's pimp, you know, when he sets yeah. up like a prostitute <laughs> and infects us and then, you know, he expects mm. us, I don't know, you know, that's how it seems kind of like to me. Yeah, God and the whole, it's, 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 you know what I'm saying, it'd be a pretty uh, immoral God. And I saw yeah. one, another one of your clips, you know, and I just tell Christians, I was like, okay, once you read the Bible and you see all these things that God are doing, put yourself in your shoes and if you have the power of God and you was almighty and all loving, which I don't see how you could um, be almighty, all loving and all these all's at the same time, it's kind of impossible, but, you know, put yourself in God's shoes and see if you could come up with an alternative explanation. If you can come up with something better, then, you know, you're better than God. You should Can, take can you come up with a better you know? system? I mean, I could come up with a better system, in, you know, in a drug-induced coma. Uh, than, than what they're purporting. But on that note, we got done lots, that many times. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we got lots of calls in little time, so thanks a lot for calling. Thank you time. very much. Yeah, yeah, Great question. Work. Sure. Take care. We've got Ed in Toronto. How are you? Hi. Um, yeah, um, this is like basically tag, except I went right down to the point, okay? So okay. It's, it's really fast, okay? Okay. There were concepts before us, concepts 